Good morning. Good morning. Shalom. Buddy. Hallelujah. Good morning, South Africa. Salamat siang to everybody in Indonesia. It's Monday morning. It's the 19th of December. And what a privilege this morning that I will spend uh, a bit of time with you around the Word of God. I'm really excited what God has been spoken the last week. He is the master builder. He is the one that restores. He is the one that uplifts. Inach Mora, good morning. We win in Jakarta. Salamat siang. Good morning. Good morning. Hallelujah. Praise God. And, and even today's word, I believe, is a word in season. I believe God is progressively telling us what He is about to do in our lives to bring us into a place of victory. Amen. So yeah, like I've said last week, I was ministering about Jesus, you know, the master boulder. And when you, probably for many people, 2022 was laying a foundation. In 2023, you will see the hard labor and the stuff that you went through. You know, it's like the fruit that you will start to harvest. But also, God is going to set people free that's been in bondage for many, many years being bowed down, if you remember the word I ministered on on uh, uh, um, Friday regarding the woman that had uh, the spirit of infirmity or uh, Charlie, good morning, good morning um, and uh, yeah, she was 18 years under that oppression always bowed down and you know, and then in the temple, Jesus saw her and he had compassion and he called her and he laid his hand upon her and he set her free. And she could have got out of that bowed situation that the demonic oppressed had her, had her in and she could lift up and she could stand up. Ronaldo, goeiemorgen, good morning. And uh, Pastor Bertha, goeiemorgen, good morning, good morning to everyone. And yeah, and I also believe that today's word is so relevant because today my, my, my theme is the wall shall be built again in troublous times. And I think the, the thing is here, the wall shall be built again. Doesn't matter what happened, you know, doesn't matter what happened in 2022, God wants to uplift you. God wants to, to bring you in the right relationship. It's like the prodigal son that returns and the father is waiting. And that's also like I've said my team this morning, the wall shall be built again in troublous time. So yes, do we live in troubled times? For sure. But that will not stop God to bring you into that place of glory. The place that He has called you for to do the things that He has anointed you for. Amen. Let's pray and we start this morning. Father, I thank you this morning for the word of God. Holy Spirit, prepare us, prepare us for 2023. Prepare our souls, prepare our minds, our hearts. Set us free of the things that, that has kept us bowing down, not able to look up. Things that for many years handicapped us. But Lord, set us free. And even today's word, Lord, that you will rebuild the wall again. Whatever happened in our lives, whatever walls has been shattered by anything that we've experienced in 2022, just like Jerusalem uh, being the temple being destroyed, uh, the wall being destroyed, and, and then there came a time out of tribulation, Father, and you called Ezra and you called Nehemiah to bring restoration. And that was a restoration to the wall and to the temple again. Father, I pray that this word will be relevant for this time. I pray that it will touch the hearts and the minds of people. And Father, uplift us so we can know and understand what you are doing right now. This season is much more than just Christmas. This season is just more uh, a holiday season, but it's a... Preparation is being equipping for 2023. And this is a vital equipping and preparation time. Lord, we only have like 11, 12 days left of this year. And then we will enter into the season 2023. Lord, and I just pray that your glory will manifest in our lives. We will be awakened 
by the call of the Spirit in this hour, Lord. And I just thank you, Father, that you open our eyes to see, our ears to hear. May your glory come upon us in Jesus Christ's mighty name. Amen, amen, hallelujah. Marley, goeie morgen, goeie morgen, Marley. Uh, Pastor Bertha, good morning, good morning. Uh, so this morning I'm speaking, the walls shall be built again in troublous time. And I, and I want to I wanna tell you this morning what I've been experiencing in my spirit. You know, there's many things that went on in our lives. We went through many things and some of the things kept us in bondage. And some of them left us in ruins. Even the walls of protection, the walls that, you know, that was in place that we felt peace and safety. The devil came and he destroyed everything. You feel vulnerable. You feel, God, why have you left me? Why am I such a disaster state? Jonathan, Salamat Young, then Jakarta. Jonathan, God bless you, young man. And, uh, and like I've said, this is all preparation for 2023. And I want to go to the book of Nehemiah. And I want you to, just to encourage you today. I want you to be bold up. I want you to know what God is doing right now. So that you can know and understand what, what God is preparing you for 2023. Amen. In Nehemiah chapter 4 verse 2 we read. And he said before his brethren and the army of Samaria, What are these feeble Jews doing? And that was son Bolet and his friends. And Nehemiah came and they want to start rebuilding the wall. And, and, uh, and they, you know, there's always oppression when God sends promotion. There's always oppression and people dis that try to discourage you when God wants to do and break you out to do great things in your life. And we see here uh, what Sanballat and his friends is saying. I, I'm going on in verse 2. Will they restore things at will and by themselves? Maybe the devil is telling you this morning, will 2023 be a better year? Will the things that, that got broken in this year, the things, will you restore that by yourselves? Do you think you are capable of getting out of your oppression? Do you think it's capable that you can help yourself in whatever thing kept you bowed down, kept you in bondage, kept you in prison? He says, will they try to bribe their God with sacrifices? And when I read that, you know, the enemy will make a mockery of your relationship with God. The enemy will say, will the time you spend with your God, is it a sacrifice? <coughs> or is it only a bribe to get what you can get from your God? The enemy will always tell you, is God in this? Or are you just bribing God so that you can be in a better place financially, in restoration, or in, 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 in relationships, and, and all of these things? And this is the thing. So the enemy will look and say, listen, I doubt your worship. I doubt your prayer. I think you're not really sincere when you pray and you read Bible and you're coming to church. Listen, I think. That you just want to bribe your God to, 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 you know, to get what you want. And then they say, will they finish up in a day? The enemy will always tell you, will you finish what you've started? Will you finish? And he will always bring you back to look at your past and say, but listen. You know, there's things that happened. Things last year, or let me say this year in January, many people had so many plans. Many people had so many things that they spoke to God. And God spoke through so many people about things. And the reality is. The reality is how many of the things that you've started in January. Truly came to an existence. How many things you've been oppressed. And the enemy came and even now you look back and say you know what. It was really a hard year. And the enemy says, whatever you think you will do in 2023, it will not happen. I'm telling you, it will not come into existence. And then he says, will they revive the stones out of the heaps of rubbish, seeing they are burned? And you know, when I read that, then I just realized how many people are like this heap, that heap of stones that's being burned. Can a person revive 
a burnt stone. Maybe this is this morning that the devil in your mind telling you, listen, you cannot be revived. You know, you cannot be, be used anymore. Whatever happened against you, whatever is your, your past, it cannot change because you are burnt and cannot be used within the kingdom of God. And the enemy will remind you of all the things you've done wrong. All the things that actually by your choices is like burned you beyond recognition. And then it will say, can a burnt stone be used in the restoration of the wall? And the enemy will challenge you and say, listen, you cannot be restored. And then the question is, will we believe the lie of the enemy? Or do we believe God that said, listen, I will rebuild the wall again, even in troubled times. Amen. You know what the enemy says is like revive a dead man. You know, can this happen? So listen, the enemy will come whatever God has placed in your heart for 2023. The enemy will, will always try to tell you it will not happen. Let's go to verse 4. How did God's people, Nehemiah, handle the words of the enemy? How did they handle the things that the enemy is trying to break you down, to make you to be discouraged, and to doubt what God is doing in your life. Listen to Nehemiah chapter 4 verse 4. Hear, O our God, for we are despised and turn, and turn their reproach upon their own head, and give them for a prey in the land of captivity, and cover not their iniquity, and let not their sin be blotted out from before thee, for they have provoked thee and anger before the boldest. So what did Nehemiah do? They turn to God. I want to tell you this morning, the first step in rebuilding your wall is whatever the oppression, whatever the lie the enemy tells you. You see, if you can believe the lie of the enemy, he already bounded you. No change will happen. You will stay a burnt stone. But if you come to God and say, I am burned. I did some really things in my life or, you know, that kept me in bondage. But I truly believe God can still revive a burnt stone. So how do we do that? We come by to God and said, listen God, I know who I am. People reminded me of my past, but I know I can turn to you. You see, there will always be people telling you, you cannot. There will always be people telling you where you come from. Listen what verse 6 says. So built we the wall, and all the wall was joined together, the half day of, for the people had a mind to work. So the first thing I want to tell you in this season, and especially for 2023, you must have a mind to work. You must have a mind to do the things God has called you for. I mean, they had to rebuild the wall. And when all of the burnt stones and the foundations and everything that was broken, you know, all the, the problems they faced did not make them negative to do what God has called them for. They looked at what God wanted them to do. And the people had a mind to do great things and to rebuild the wall. Verse 7, But it come to pass that when Sanballat and Tobiah and the Arabians and the Ammonites and the Ashodites heard that the walls of Jerusalem were made up and that the breach began to be stopped, then they were very wroth. I mean, they got really mad. I mean, the Bible speaks in original, you know, in original language, they was furious. Listen, the devil will be furious if you get out from the oppression into a place of victory. The devil will be furious if he can lose that grip that holds you back to do what God has called you for. But this is the season where God said, I want to restore your wall. I want to bring a restoration for you. I want to be your protection. I want you to live in my peace. I want you to live in faith. I want you to do what I've called you for do, to do. And then verse 8. So the devil is not just, will not just get mad about, you know, what is happening. It says in verse 8, And conspired all of them together to come and fight against Jerusalem and to hinder it. 
The thing I want to say, when God starts rebuilding your wall, all hell will break loose. Why? Because the enemy wants you still to be a burnt stone. The enemy don't want you to rebuild whatever the devil broke down. The, the enemy wants you to live a life of defeat. The enemy wants you, whatever happened in 2022, he wants you to carry on that defeated state of mind in 2023. Because he knows if the wall is not restored, if you are not restored, you cannot do anything for the kingdom of God. And verse 9, nevertheless, we made our prayer unto our God. <laughs> I want to tell you this morning, doesn't matter. I serve a living God. I will make my prayer to God and then I will do something I need to do. I will set a watch against them day and night because of them. So what does it say? I'm not just praying to God and then I carry on. No, I'm be, I will be vigilant. I will keep watch. Verse 10, and then Judah said, the strength of the barriers of burdens is decayed and there is much rubbish so that we are not able to build the wall. Maybe in your life there's a lot of rubbish that needs to be taken care of. And with all the oppression, it might be a bit difficult. But the thing is, whatever the enemy will bring to stop you from being restored, building the wall, God will help you. Amen. Verse 11, and our adversary said, They shall not know neither see till we come in the midst among them and slay them and cause the work, the work to cease. You see, the enemy will always come at night. He will always come in a time when you are weak. He will always try to do when you are discouraged. He will always try, you know, you, you can this morning say, Wow, 2023 is going to be a great year. And then on the first or second or the first week in January, all hell break loose because the enemy will always try to discourage what God wants to do in your life. But the problem is we quit in a time of discouragement and we do not rise above those things that the enemy brings. And verse 12, and it came to pass that, that when the Jews which dwelt by them came, they said unto us ten times, from all Places where you shall return unto us, they will be upon you. He says, every place you think you can protect yourself, we will be there. Don't be foolish, the devil says, because I will not allow you to be restored. I will not allow the walls in your life to be restored and rebuilt. Amen. Because why? If it's rebuilt, your faith comes to a level where you say, thus says the Lord, whatever the enemy does. When, when the storms of life happen, you will not just try to get the water out of the boat. You will speak to your storm and the storm will cease. You see, when, you, when your walls are rebuilt, there's a faith element that rises above whatever the enemy brings. But if the walls is still broken down, you're still in doubt. You still wonder if God is going to help me. Why? Because there's no visible protection that you experience. But God is saying in this time and hour, I will build your walls in troublous times. Even what we are facing, the world is saying 2023 is going to be a year of hunger, a year of, 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 of a lot of poverty, a lot of things, a, lot, a, a year of war. And, and there's so many things. That's the devil, son Balat. What being spoken over Nehemiah, the same thing is being spoken out of the mouths of people to the church to lose their focus and to lose their courage and to just, well, I don't know where is God. But you see, God is raising up people right now and He's rebuilding the wall. People that will rise up, people that will get out of the boat and start walking on the water. And this is the what God wants us to be in 2023. People of faith. People who walk in the power, the resurrection power of God. But He has to restore you before you can get into that position where you can walk in that faith. So what did they do? Verse 13. Therefore said I in the lower places behind the wall and on the high places. I even said the people after, the, after their families with their swords, their spears and their bows. He said, be, be, be prepared. Put on your armor every day. Be vigilant. Don't just pray to God and think, you know, nothing is going to happen. There's also that you need to watch over the word God has spoken over your life. 
verse 14. And I looked and I rose up and said unto the nobles and to the right of them, Remember the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. I want to tell you this morning. Listen, be not afraid of 2023. Be not afraid about your past. Be not afraid what happened. The Lord, He says here, the Lord, remember the Lord, which is great and terrible, and fight for your brethren, your sons and your daughters, your wives and your houses. Listen, God will fight the fight on your behalf. Nevertheless, verse 9, Nevertheless, we made our prayer unto our God, and we set the watch against them day and night because of these attacks. I just want to focus a bit on verse 9. And he said, Now we offered our prayers unto God, and we set our watch. I mean, prayer was not used in a place of responsibility actions just, nor should prayer ever be used in a place of responsible actions. I mean, there's still a responsibility that we need to be vigilant even we pray. God expects us to act responsible. Amen. I say some people use prayer only as an excuse when they're in some sort of trouble because they, they do not see God. They do not have this relationship. And when the storms of life happen, you know, the first thing they, they, they try to grab is prayer. Well, you can. But if the heart is not in line with God and the mouth is not in line with God, I mean, then you're not truly responsible. Amen. Listen what Psalm 127 verse 1 says. A song of the, of the decrees of Solomon. Except the Lord build the house. They labor in vain that built it. Except the Lord keep the city. The watchman waketh but in vain. So the watchman still, even if God is building the wall, rebuilding you, even if God is still busy in your life, there still need to be a watchman that needs to be awake. Amen. What is a watchman? Somebody that look out for the enemy. I mean, we don't say, Lord, watch the city and then everybody just go to sleep. You know, we live in a time that many, many more, many, many people, you know, go on holiday and church is closed because it's holiday. And are there watchmen? You know, in this time and hour, at the end of a season, are the watchmen awake, be vigilant, even you take a rest? I'm not against holiday. I'm not against rest. I'm not. I'm just saying the following. It's like the church is going to sleep because everybody needs a rest. But our rest and peace we find in Christ Jesus. Amen. But if the Lord isn't watching, He's waking up and he that there is in vain. So if God is not watching, doesn't matter if you watch, nothing will happen. Amen. We need to realize that it is necessary that God watch the city, but we also realize it's necessary that we take actions, what God requires of us. I mean, they did not just pray to God building the house. No. What did Nehemiah did? He said, listen. You have to have a truffle in the one hand and your sword in the other hand. So we pray to God, but also we vigilant in the natural for whatever can happen. In Nehemiah chapter 4 verse 10 it says, Those of Judah said, The strength of the barriers of the burdens are decayed. And there is much rubbish so that we are not able to build the wall. They just began to get discouraged. I mean, and that's a tool of discouragement in the hand of the enemy is to, to seek to discourage you from the work of the Lord. You see, discouragement is the thing. And it says here, it just used another word. The barriers, the strength of the barriers of the burdens are decayed. During this year, when the things got tough, did you got discouraged? And did the enemy succeed in discourage you to quit? Say, so, well, it's not working. I've tried. I've prayed. God, I really, truly want to do your will. But I've not succeeded. Why? Because of discouragement. Because your strength decayed. You're facing everyday life. We've, in South Africa, we have the electric crisis. We have businesses that's being affected. Finance being affected. And we can go to, Carry on that all things that's being affected. 
everyday life. People have to, to, to deal with this. And we pray. But are we vigilant for what the enemy wants to do in your spiritual life or in your life? Amen. I say, when a person allows discouragement to stop him or to hinder him from that work and calling of God upon his life, it's tragic. We are at the end of the year. Maybe you failed in 2022. Maybe you've tried. Maybe there's some things that didn't work out. But I want to tell you, God is restoring right now. God is preparing His people for 2023. God is restoring people that's been under an oppression for so long. Amen. I say there are always many people with words of discouragement for anything you might seek to do for the Lord. I mean, there's always people, if you speak about what is your expectation of 2023, and you're full of the glory of God and excitement, while people are negative and moaning and groaning, and you, there will always be people say, ah, you know, let's talk in six months. Whatever you think, well, it will not happen. But do you believe God? Because if you believe, you know, God will set things in motion to rebuild that wall. Bring you in a place of peace, even amidst the wars that happen around you. Amen. People will say, don't you realize people have tried to do that before? You know, or maybe, you know, you tried 10 years ago and it was really a mistake or a flaw. You feel like doing something for the Lord. There's always someone who pour cold water on your ideas to discourage you. And many times people unfortunately allow discouragement to keep them from the word of God. But what is saying? They, their strength were tired in these harassing attacks. You see, God wants to restore the wall. Many people, you know, the wall's being torn down and they we open in attacks every day and they struggled. And some people rise up and say, God, I want to rebuild and restore my relationship with you. I really, and then you have all of these things that are happening. It's just so difficult. You're coming to church with the expectation that the Lord will just touch you. You're coming to, you know, in your worship time, in your, in your prayer time, God just touch me. And sometimes it's like this, the voice of God is so far away. But you know what? I want to tell you, don't. Be afraid. In Psalm 23 verse 4 it says, Yea, yea, thou I walk through the valley of death. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. You see, fear always ensures, you know, that we will forget God. The main thing about fear, what, it, what it's doing and why it's such a powerful weapon the devil is using, is to, because fear makes you to forget God. Fear makes you to take your eyes from God and look at your situation. And you look at your limit things that only, you know, you are limited to do. But faith makes you not to look at this, but to look at God and say, you know, God, nothing is impossible. Because even when I'm weak, I'm strong. Why? Because it's not about me. It's because the resurrection power, what, God, what Christ Jesus gave me through His death, His resurrection, and me being accepting Jesus and being baptized, that same same resurrection powers within me. But you can have that power, but fear makes you to lock it. You know, to, to basically lock it down. And then you're under the oppression what fear brings, because it brings torment. And the thing is, the long, as long as you're in fear, the devil is not worried. Why? Because your fear becomes your captivity. And you cannot see the glory of God in a place of fear. But if you have faith, you will rise above. Because it's not about what the devil is doing. It's about what God is about to do. doesn't matter if it's today or tomorrow. But I know my God, even if I go through this valley, I know God is with me. And if God is with me, what can man do to me? Amen. Psalm 42 verse 5. Why, David, speak about this. Why art thou cast down, O my soul? Why art thou disquieted within me? Because I've forgotten the, that God is on the throne. So the, you fear makes you, your soul to be cast down. Fear makes you to be disquiet, you know, uh, that, 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 um, what's the word I'm looking for? You know, that, that faith becomes disquiet within you. Amen. 
In Hebrews chapter 13 verse 5, Because I have forgotten that God is on the throne, I have forgotten that the Lord has said, I will never leave you or forsake you. Hebrews 13 5. I've forgotten the power of the Lord and the presence of the Lord. And thus fear gripped my heart and discouraged because I have forgotten the Lord. And, and this time, if I'm speaking about restoring the wall, God is awaking His watchmen. He's awaking something new right now for us to rise up, to get out of the place we are being burdened with, the place of oppression. I say, I mean, we need to understand and to remember the Lord is with us. So what happened? And so God put the counsel of the enemies to naught. Let me read verse 15 and 16. And so God put the counsel of the enemies to naught. He said, listen, whatever they said, whatever their plans will not succeed. God is telling you today, my friend, whatever the plans of the enemy for 2023, it will come to naught if you do not forget God. Amen. And then... And they returned again to building of the wall. Every man to his work. Listen. Don't bolt on another man's space. Bolt what's in front of you. God has anointed you for this time and season. He's equipped you. He's called you to rebuild your wall right now. Because then the body of Christ can function as a unit. Then the wall can serve as a unity. But we need to understand. We need to allow God to rebuild us. So we need to work on us. So it come to pass from that time forth that half of the fellows, fellows would work and half would stand watching with their spears ready for the attack. And Nehemiah was standing there and he had, you know, like an armor barrier with a trumpet. Pastor Marius, good morning. And he was looking out. And I'm speaking to the leaders now. God has given you a trumpet. To sound the alarm when you experience the enemy is coming. So that your church, so that the body of Christ can come into warfare. It's time for the leaders to, to pick up that trumpet and be vigilant in the position that God has called you for. You cannot just preach every Sunday and every Sunday you preach and preach and preach. Pastor Maris, good morning doc. Um, you cannot just. You are also carrying something that will make alarm for your church. Seeing that God will show you the enemy is coming. And I believe in 2023 we will see the body of Christ come into a full or into existence. That when the trumpet sound, the body will be ready to do the work of God. Amen. I say now it's interesting that in Daniel, uh, Mora, Rian and Carissa, uh, in Daniel's prophecy concerning the commandment to restore and rebuild Jerusalem to the coming of the Messiah. In Daniel 9.25 it says, And the wall shall be built again in troublous time. Daniel already prophesied what's to come. And that's why my theme is I believe that, you know, God said there will come troubled times. But it doesn't matter. The troubled times will not stop me from rebuilding you. To bring you in the place of God's fullness. To bring you in the place where God can do great things through your life. Amen. But the thing is, the enemy will always try to stop you. The enemy will always try to, to bring you down. I want to stop here this morning and I just want to pray for you. And I want to speak to the church leaders. And I want to say, listen, God has given you a trumpet. That whenever you experience something in the spirit, to blow that so that... The people building the kingdom of God can act on that and they can do, they can act through their faith, exercise the resurrection power of God. But also us being built up because I believe God wants to, to restore us to get into 2023, our, our walls being rebuilt. The things that the enemy so easily come in 2022 just come and attack us. And Why? Because the walls were totally torn. Well, it was totally destructive. And that's why many things did not come into pass in 2022. Because of we were open for the attack of the, of the enemy. But God said, I'm going to restore. I'm going to bring you in a place where, where, where you will experience 
that safety of God surrounding you, your wall will be restored. And out of that position, you know, once that happened, you will walk in a level of faith where you can say, thus says the Lord. But you know, while the walls is torn down, you struggle to, to live in faith, you live in doubt, you live in, uh, you know, it's so difficult to understand, you know, why the things is happening in your life. Where is we supposed to go through the things? I would like to pray for you this morning. Heavenly Father, I just pray this morning. I believe this word is the word in season where you are restoring and end this restoration process. Maybe in the lives of people for the last month or two months, Lord, you're already preparing restora restoration in their lives. But it came with a lot of difficulty. It came with a lot of verbal abuse by the enemy. They're telling you it will not succeed. Just quit. Just give up. But God, the work you've started in us, you will complete. And I pray that you will strengthen everybody right now. You will strengthen their hands. Lord, that, you will, that they will be strengthened for 2023. Lord, that the work you've started and the walls you're rebuilding, it will be complete in Jesus Christ's name. And the ones still in process, Lord, that, that, that they will be vigilant. They will be watchmen. Father, they will... Because... It will be complete. You will succeed. And Father, I just pray, bless them today. Lord, let us look up. Let us get out of bondage. Let us get into a place of, of glory and holiness, Lord, where we can move and live in the fullness of God, building the kingdom. And I pray, Holy Spirit, that you just touch and strengthen everyone right now. Doesn't matter what's happening around them. Doesn't matter the troublous situation. You've started something, you will complete it. And I, I declare that every wall will be restored, even before the end of this year. So God, that we can be vigilant and we can come into that, that right relationship that is required. And right now, Father, I just bless everyone. I pray, God, Holy Spirit, minister unto them. Strengthen them right now. Release all of the lies and deceit. I break the power of fear over them, the power of doubt, Lord. And I say, Lord, let their faith rise up, Lord. Let them experience the glory and the peace of the Father. The Holy Spirit, just minister unto them. In Jesus Christ's mighty name, we honor you right now. Bless them, Father. Bless them. In Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Ika, good morgen. In Holland. Thank you for watching. Thank you. Share this with someone. Just now I'm praying for you. God is doing great things in this time from the beginning of December. I believe God is not finished with you. I just believe you will experience a lot of breakthroughs and things, restoration before the end of this year. You just trust God. You just keep your eye on Him. And when you pray, be also vigilant. Amen. And may God bless you today. May you experience His favor upon your life today. And may, you know, whatever the situation, may your faith overcome every line, the seat of the devil. Jesus loves you. Amen.